The view from above tells the story. Blocks of ice on Jean Marie River's dirt roads. Days ago, they were under as much as two meters of water. Nearly all of the tiny community's 26 homes have been damaged. It ruined everything. Everything was flipped over. When we went in there, the fridge was flipped. The deep freezer, like all the kids' beds, our bed. The dressers and TVs and like everything was soaked and ruined. The high water uprooted fuel tanks, contaminating the area. Even the school and band office were flooded. A tense time for Carla Norwegian, her partner, and their three children. Sit down, babies. Sit down. So we grabbed the kids and we made it. We made it to the access road. And there was a line of trucks. I think there was our truck and a truck behind us that made it out before it was. It got too deep. With no power in Jean Marie River, the family left for Fort Providence, an hour away. Most of the community did the same. Yellowknife normally accommodates evacuees from nearby communities, but this year, with a wave of COVID cases, residents want to stay closer to their homes. The chief of Jean Marie River says now they have to assess the damage. The water is going down quite a bit, and hopefully that power cord will fold in their portable generator this morning, this afternoon, and fire up the community as much as they can. But people here are worried about neighboring communities also experiencing flooding. We're going to probably have to help our relatives in Port Simpson that got this place too. So I don't know. I know some of them lost their homes totally. As for Carla Norwegian and her family. No, we don't have a plan right now. She just knows she's not going back to Jean Marie River anytime soon. Juanita Taylor, CBC News, Yellowknife. So listen, no doubt, pretty terrible situation there. Let's try to understand what's driving it. Meteorologist Johanna Wagstaff joining us. And do we know, given the fact that the ice breaks up every spring, why the flooding is so bad this year? Yeah, Andrew, the severity of the flooding really comes down to day-to-day -day weather conditions. If we had a, a gradual spring warm-up, the river ice would just melt into the water. But when we have these wild temperature swings, the ice breaks up into these larger chunks. And that's what ends up getting jammed up at the natural bends and, and curves in the river. On top of that, we've had record high water levels because of the big snowpack this year. So that's adding to the extra flooding that we're seeing. And by the way, Andrew, I should mention... Mackenzie River still has a lot of ice to melt, and we're still looking at these big temperature swings in the forecast. Right. And Joe, how straight a line can we draw between what's happening and climate change? I think because this does happen every year, it's hard to make a direct connection, but we do know that a warming climate will still mean La Nina years that bring us these these big snowpack events. We also know it'll mean warming faster in the north, more volatile weather conditions and shifts in the season. So it's part of the reason why forecasters are honing in on trying to get better at the very difficult process of ice jam forecasting, because we know climate change will play a role. Okay, Johanna Wagstaff, thank you. You're welcome.